Right, hello guys and welcome back to another part in my analog synthesizer DIY tutorial series videos. Um, in this one it's going to just be another one covering breadboarding techniques uh, that I personally use. So I'm not saying the way I do it is the right way but it's the way I do it and it's the way I've kind of had success with my circuits that I've been prototyping, experimenting with etc. Uh, this particular circuit I have on the board here is the Oberheim SEM voltage controlled amplifier circuit and again if we observe this is an AD01 breadboard which you can get if you're in the UK you can get this one from Maplins not quite sure if you can get this anywhere else in the world hope there is somewhere um, it is available because it's a really really a really good breadboard to use I, I personally think um, so yeah so what we have here is our wiring which is done it with the internals of cat5 which will give you eight solid strand cores so i find it good because it means again as i sort of said in the other videos you can color code your um you can color code your power rail so orange will be my plus voltage regardless if that's you know plus nine plus ten um to whatever voltage you're using and the blues i use as my negative voltage and if we see over here we observe this is where i've got all my ground so my incoming supplies will go here and here and here respectively uh, quite a simple circuit not a lot of components on the board here if we can see these little orange uh, capacitors here these are little ceramic 0 0.1 um microfarads capacitors also you may see the on the schematic as 100 nanofarads there is a capacitor calculator app out there which you can get for sort of android phones i'm sure there is one for ios can't 100 percent speak for that because i don't own a ios phone and uh, so you put just put in the value if you find you find you put in the three numbers of the value you find in the capacitor and it will tell you what the values are in all the relevant um What's the word? Can't think of it. So it will give you it, it, it will give you the value in nanofarads, picofarads, and microfarads. Because every kind of schematic they kind of document them in different you know different different values, right? Anyway, so basically what I've kind of I sh you know I kind of could have should have got into this practice at the beginning, but I kind of didn't know about this too much or didn't know why it was necessary. So what I've done is put these bypass capacitors next to the power rails, which you, if we observe here, this is the this is a dual op amp, and this one's a dual op amp. Now this one is supposed to be a C, as you can see, is a CA thirty eighty, which is a single operational transconductance amplifier, which is a current controlled amplifier, as opposed to a you know a gain a gain a gain amplifier. It works different. It's not like an op amp. You can't sort of, you know, we don't work with um, positive or negative feedback with these. Anyway, not going to go too much into that. So as we can see, we take one end from the power rail from any side of these are unpolarized, non-polarized capacitors. And if we look on the schematic, we'll see a non-polarized capacitor symbolized by, and let's say, we'll just call that 100 nanofarads as, as opposed to a uh, polarized capacitor, which will have a curve which will denote negative and positive there. Right, anyway, um, just coming quickly back to it, as we can see, what I've tried, what I, I normally do out of practice is try and keep the wiring as neat as possible. It really helps when you have to troubleshoot in the future. Um, for instance, here, you can see, I've, like I said, I've got all my ground nodes, um, all, all my ground wires in brown, power rails in orange and blue, positive, negative going up to these um all the relevant points uh just just quickly go back on what i've kind of just missed out so basically what these bypass capacitors are for in an ideal world you would have a hundred percent normal stable voltage now these kind of access stabilizers or your your shall we say your um supply donkeys or camels whatever you want to call them so you imagine you're going up that hill you, you you're starting to get a little bit of you getting a little bit tired your your work rate starts flagging a bit these will actually store store your food for you and dump you extra charge when you need it nice and easy does it um again as we can see here um on this particular 
on this particular build. I'm just experimenting for this because I'm, I'm, I'm hoping to get a CA3080 through the, through the post in a couple of days. What I've done is a buffer stage for the control voltage in and I'm, what I've tried to do is tr keep the control voltage op amp separate from the signal op amp. So what I did on my um, version of the amplifier is basically come into the come out from the um, operational transconductor amplifier which was an LM13700 which was a dual and I'll come into one gain stage here on one side and then I, I will reverse I will invert that signal again and go out into the VCA con level control which is tied in with the wave folder on the other side of my um, VCA board and I have a blend potentiometer to go between clean signal and wave folded signal and also the um, so this is basically the point here the node here where the control voltage is um, come in and I've kept the audio signal side with a by um, sorry a coupling capacitor so this is an AC coupled one which will block DC signals and try to keep that um, capacitor value as large as possible so we keep the circuit, uh, should I say the signal integrity, frequency integrity as close as possible to what's coming in. If we use a smaller, we can end up sort of squashing the signal, skewing our waveforms. Maybe that's kind of what you, that's what you want. So you can, I'm not saying you can't do it, you can do it, but yeah, uh, that's just something to take note of. Um, Something somebody mentioned, a subscriber mentioned in the previous video in the comments, which was something which I didn't mention. I'll try and I mean, you know, I'm only human, I do these videos on the fly, I don't pre rehearse them. So, literally, what I say is literally what comes to my head as I do it. So, you have to bear with me, people. I do miss out a few things, but yeah, I suppose that's a good thing about the comment sections. You know, there's things that you personally would recommend for other people please put them in the comments and you know contribute as a community to all this so what i have here is a tester which has you know it's a cheap tester We've got enough voltage range dc ac we can measure current we can measure hfe we have a small part which we plug in um to measure transistors and we can measure diodes, etc. We get our resistance range. So what I'm going to do is just basically see if I have a good um, a good continual path between my ground connections. All right. Let's try and pop that in there. So I'll pop the orange side into here into another extreme side of the ground just to make sure there we go go for every single range we've got zero now one thing i have to do to these if you look on the tips of these they, they can actually come these probes they come tipped if you ever tried getting a tip into one of these points it's bloody impossible so what i've had to do is cut some cat5 cable try and keep it fairly short because the longer you have it you know there's going to be resistance along there somewhere and what I had to do is, is solder the actual, wrap it around and soft strip it, wrap it around in a coil and solder it to the actual probe, the metal part of the probe. And then just did a continuity check on the actual probes just to make sure, you know, there we have it. We've got a nice zero volt, or should I say, zero resistance. So we're going to get a nice flow flowing path for our circuit. Same thing on all your power, other power rails. Again, leave a little gap up there so we can send a jumper cable like so across into there. And what I'm going to use this for is just to put in the signal connection which goes from the uh, coupling capacitor for the audio signal in into the OTA which will go into the in, inverting input of the OTA so as you can see I've bent I've bent that into shape I've offered it up giving it some nice corners and then I'm going to give it another bend here so we've kind of got like a pair of goalposts there I'm going to snip it 
so it's roughly the same length. Get my grips on it. Strippers. Done. And then plop that in to the non-inverting side of the OTA and link that with the capacitor. As you can see, I've tried to keep all my audio or other, any other kind of um, connections in white color. Again, when it comes to troubleshooting, I can kind of get my head around it nice and easily and pretty much know where everything is and who's, go who's going where. And there we have it. Like I said, try and, try and keep our cables to a minimum. Sometimes if you just want to quickly make a knock up, it, you know, if you've got other bits of cut cable, just keep everything if you can. Even if you don't, you strip the circuit down, you, you think, oh, I might not use that again. Keep it because you're basically just wasting it. Right? It might be quite inexpensive, but it's always handy. You may have things pre-cut, which all oh, just may fit in the right length. You can use that and that's, you know, that saved you a bit of time. There you go. Anyway, I can't think there's anything else I really, really need to say about this, to be honest with you. Um, I'll try and be back with some more um, tutorial videos and maybe try and do a test video with the um, the CA3080 um, VCA build when that comes through the post um, in a couple of days or so. Anyway, thanks for watching, guys. Again, please subscribe, share, and leave comments, questions, etc. And take it nice and easy. All right, catch you soon.